Word of God with you. If you will, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Just going to look at a few verses, but so much contained within these um, few verses this morning. If you will, we're going to read verses 29 through 32. You can entitle the message today, The New Man. The new man is kind and not cruel. If you will, let's read together these verses. It says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If you will, let's bow together in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you today thanking you for this day. We thank you now for your word, your word that many times we neglect or fail to see how much we need you and we need your word. But let us come today with um, hungry hearts to get more of what you have to feed us, your spiritual food, your word. It's through your word that one that the lost soul sees that they have a need of the Savior and that they could be saved by trusting in him. But also today, may us as believers that we would be hungry to become more like Jesus, that we would be given the uh, word and the ability and being equipped to put off the old man, the man who is dead, the natural man, the sinful and selfish man, that we may today practically put him off daily and put on the new man and walk in the ways that you would have us to in the likeness of your son. Please be with me as I preach your word, but all of us as we receive your word and put it into action. It's in your son's precious name we do pray. Amen. So again, if you will, been a fascinating study in Ephesians chapter 4. And what we've been looking at just here recently is, is really the contrast of the way we used to be. The way we used to be um, given over to sinfulness and giving over to selfishness. If you will, again, now he is teaching us what the old man looked like, the ways of the old man, and, and now, though, what the new man is to look like. What practically the new man is to look like. And my friend, let me tell you this this morning. Be encouraged, believer, you have been made a new creation. Amen? You are a new person. He is not just bettering the old you and making the best you possible. He has made you a new creation. Amen? He has made you a new creation in Christ Jesus to do good works that He has before ordained for you to do. Amen? And we're going to learn a little bit more this morning some of those good works. And my friend, this is seen in our everyday life, with our everyday interaction with fellow believers and with other people. So my friend today, do you desire to see what the new man's to look like? Do you desire to be really more like Christ? If so, let us do this, and at times it's hard, but let us honestly view ourselves in light of the Scripture and then say, Lord, I know I have fallen short, and we all have, but say, Lord, now I'm ready for you to have your will and way in and through me. Amen? If you will, let's look at the first verse and really dig deep into what Scripture is saying. It says here, it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So first, my friend, as a believer, know this, that the Lord is teaching you to put off corrupt communication. And what is this corrupt communication? He's teaching us, don't use foul or abusive language anymore. Amen? And I'll just tell you, as believers, we are 
too prone at times to keep walking and keep speaking like the old dead man. We've been used to living that way. In our relationships, some of our hardest relationships, it is most difficult to put off the old man and to keep him dead. Amen? At times when we're challenged to love people and to be patient with people and to forbear, it is difficult at times to keep the old man dead and to live like the new man. But let me tell you, my friend, God is speaking truth. Let the believer put off abusive and destructive speech. Let our talk not be destructive anymore. What does he say? But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. Believer, did you hear that? Again, this is all about, get this, practically putting off the way we used to live, the way we used to speak, and practically putting on, get this, the righteous clothing of the new man. And my friend, I'll just tell you, when we dig deep and we grow as a believer, the Lord's going to challenge the way we speak to each other. Amen? He's going to challenge us in all areas of our life, including communication. Here, it, it brings out this truth. Get this. It is very true that we could either use our words, we could either use our words to tear down to destroy, or we could use our words to do what is actually good and to do what's helpful, amen? Again, at times we, are, we, uh, we, we get offended, we get hurt. Sometimes we feel justified in the way that we speak to each other. But let me tell you, there's no justification in speaking like the old man the Lord is saying, put that way of speaking off, amen? Put on, get this. So ask yourself today, how much of my conversations, get this, with every person in my life, how much of my words have been destructive and have discouraged and have torn down, have destroyed, and how much of my words have been good and have built up, amen, and have actually helped? Let me tell you this truth here, Proverbs 18 and 21. But this is so true, but listen to this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Did you hear that? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So let me just tell you, that member of your body that is one of the smallest members of your body, the tongue, that member of your body, um, which, which uh, is part of your speech, get this, it is so small, but it is so powerful. Amen? And you've seen it in your life. You've been torn down and discouraged by people in your life that has really said the wrong things. You yourself, sadly, if we would be honest, you yourself and all of us included, at times we have used our words to not build up, but to tear down. Amen? We have. But know this today. This again as the believer is, is uh, putting all into obedience to following Christ again, even in our speech. Some of the most good and some of the most harm that you will do in your life revolves around the words we use. So know this today. Be, be, be reminded of this. Again, your words will either destroy or they will help. They will either encourage they will discourage. Get this again. Reflect this week. Reflect today. Every word that you speak to your spouse, to your kids, to your parents, um, to your siblings, to your boyfriend, to your girlfriend, to your pastor, to your fellow church members and believers, to your boss, to your employees, to your teacher, to your classmates, to your best friend, but also even to your enemy. Every word that we use this week will either help or it will destroy. Amen? Knowing that, my friend, will we get serious about um, reflecting upon our speech? Again, I've mentioned before that 
And really, the heart of man is deceitful. It's deceitfully wicked, but get this. Even as we walk throughout our lives, I mentioned earlier that sometimes we justify. We justify our speech. We think, well, in light of what they have done to me, in light of where I am in my life right now, I'm fully justified in speaking to the people the way I speak to them. But let me tell you, my friend, the heart of man is deceitfully wicked. And I'll just tell you, we deceive ourselves thinking we're justified in many of the things that we do. Amen? We think that we're justified in it. So again, honestly, um, ask yourself, what do I intend to accomplish by the words that I'm about to say to this person? Amen? And my friend, we really should get to where we do think before we speak, right? Sometimes people will say, well, it kind of just slipped out. But again, that's why God is leading us to be very much in control of the words that we say. I'll tell you, Scripture even brings out this truth that even out of all the most powerful animals that is on the face of this earth, can you imagine the strength and power behind even the fiercest of animals, the predators in this world, yet man has been able to tame them, right? But yet with the tongue, the small member of your own body, yet man is many times incapable of controlling. And I'll just tell you, on his own, he can't. He can't. But get this, my friend, you have been made a new creation, amen? You've been given a new heart. And you've been given the Holy Spirit, and we'll get to this in just a moment. The Holy Spirit will be a guard over your mouth if you would be sensitive and obedient to the Holy Spirit's leading, amen? Let me read this verse of Scripture as well. Matthew, you already know the power of your tongue. Life and death, help destroy. But also know that, that your words are weighty, but know that not only are they weighty and destructive or helpful, but get this, Matthew 12 and 36 says this, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Amen? Let me just tell you, my friend, the Lord knows everything that we say and do. And even deeper than that, even our thoughts. He even knows, get this, you might, you might think sometimes, I'm justified. All I did was spoke the truth. What I said was okay, but let me tell you, my friend, God knows your heart behind it as well, amen? He knows how you intended it. He knows if you spoke the truth in love or if you spoke the truth in, hate, in hatred. Amen? He knows if you have actually said that because you actually thought it would help the person or if you have just said that to get back at the person. Amen? And I'll just tell you, God will, get, will have you give an account for everything. Do we realize that? We often forget that. We, we think we just li live life however want, we want. We're okay. But let me tell you, the Lord is looking on every single thing we say and do. Amen? Again, he even said of, of idle words, again, careless words. Again, that's why I made that mention earlier. Some people say, what, well, just kind of slipped out? My friend, that's careless speaking. Again, if we're reminded today how powerful the tongue is and the fact that we'll give account for every word, we need to realize we, we better be very cautious about what we say and don't say. Amen? James 3 and 8, and 10, 8 through 10 says this. Very good, very true today. Therewith, speaking of the tongue, therewith, get this, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, with uh, which are made after the similitude of, of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Did you hear that? 
The Lord just told us that, get this, many times, even as believers, we will use the same tongue to praise the Lord at one moment, sing praises to Him at church or even in your life, and the next moment we use the same tongue to destroy and to hurt fellow people. Amen? Even fellow believers. And God said, look, they're made in the similitude of God. Man is created in the image of God. Amen? Man is loved by God. If we're tempted the next, this week, today, whatever it may be, maybe even on the way home, if we're tempted to speak a destructive word to the person in our life or the people in our life, remind yourself of this. That is a person made in the image of God. Amen? That is someone that God loves so much that He gave His only begotten Son to die on their behalf. Amen? He says, look, out of the same mouth, blessing and cursing come, but He says this, my brethren, brothers and sisters, beloved, these things ought not be so. Amen? Let me challenge you in one more thing. Again, we've many times we've settled for it being so. We've settled for praising God at one moment and tearing down and destroying each other at the next moment. We've settled for that. But believer, brethren, it ought not be so. Amen. Would you agree? I think sometimes the fir- this is the first step that is needed Always, this is the first step that's needed. To confess sin means that you agree with God. It ought not be so. Amen. You would agree with God that, look, this is sin. It's not okay. Even if it's been norm for too long in our life as a believer or in certain relationships in our life, even as a believer today, would you confess and agree with God, God, this ought not be so. Amen. And then, my friend, would you ask the Lord, it it ought not be so, would you forgive me? And would you help me? Amen? You could come at any moment to the throne of grace, asking Him for grace, mercy, and help. Amen? We do that often. Even with our speech, would we do that? Daily, would we do that? Let this be your prayer, Psalm 141 and verse 3. Listen, if you will. The psalmist is saying this to the Lord. Set a watch, or a guard. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. My friend, if we're serious this morning, if we are agreeing with God and saying, this ought not be so, if we are agreeing with God and saying, look, the way that I've been acting and speaking is the old man, but I'm a new man, amen? I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. And if you would agree with God and say, I know the way that God wants me to speak, would you agree with God and say, but look, I cannot do it without your help. Amen. I've been made a new creation, but I must daily, I must daily ask the Lord for help. Amen. We do. If we're honest with ourselves today, we would realize that even in speech, I desperately need the Lord's help daily. Amen. And would this be your prayer? Lord, would you set a watch over my lips, over my mouth? My friend, I believe this is this is intentionally saying, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, and through the direction of your word, would you teach me the things that ought be so? Would you teach me the way that I should speak? Think about this. That's what the Holy Spirit is there to do in you. That is what the Holy Spirit is there to do. Get this, is to teach you the things of Jesus. And this whole chapter and really this whole book, Believer, has been about you wanting to be more like Christ in all things. Amen? And that's what the Holy Spirit will do in your life, believer, is He will teach you what it means to look like Christ. Will teach you and remind you 
what it looks like to be like Christ. Amen? And get this, even when you're speaking with people in your life and you're irritated or you're upset or you're having a bad day or when you've been hurt, when you've been hurt by someone else, whatever it may be, it's the Holy Spirit that is there to convict you and say, look, you ought not say that, but you ought to say this instead. Amen? But the key is, each day, just like putting on new clothes, the illustration that is given here today, each day would you put on those new clothes? Would you start out the day and say, Lord, I need your help. I want to be like Christ even in my speech today, but I need your help. Sometimes if someone's hurt you throughout the day, again, it's, it's a continuous prayer. Throughout the day when someone's hurt you, when you're having a bad day, before you're about to be around anyone, you are, I hope and pray that we are praying without ceasing. That we are constantly saying, Lord, before I even say a word, would you help my heart be right? Would you help me to use my words to build up and not to destroy? Amen? Get this, if you will. It goes into... It gets deeper. Again, it talks about our speech, putting off the old way of speaking, putting on the new way of speaking. But let me get a little bit deeper. The Word of God goes deeper. It will expose areas of your life even deep within. You ready? Are you ready for a light to be shown deeper even into our hearts? God has a desire because He loves you and me to shine deeper and expose the real problem at times. At times we treat people or we speak to people in the wrong way and we sometimes feel justified, but if you let God, He will expose you even right now that sometimes the problem is even deeper within you, amen, and within me. What does this verse say, 31? It says this, Let all... The Lord is very clear. Again, don't feel justified to do this sometimes. God says, let all. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen? Did you hear the Lord? And as we look at this and get deeper, it will bring to light what these words actually really mean. So ask yourself, is this a problem that I'm having right now? Is this a problem that I'm having with everyone? Is this a problem that I'm having with God? Is this a problem that I'm having with certain people in my life that is, is very difficult to love? Is this a problem that I'm having? And if it is, would you let God show it to you? And will you let God teach you how to love instead? What does bitterness mean? He says, look, put away all bitterness. What does bitterness mean? Get this. Bitterness means it is anger which is held in. You often hear this phrase, someone being bitter. It is them being unhappy, them being angry, them being not content with something in their life and therefore they're letting anger be held in and they become bitter. Again, there's many reasons why this could happen in, in life. It could be your lot in life that you're angry and bitter about. It could be the way someone's treated you in your life. It could be that you have not gotten your way in something or that you want things to be perfect or whatever it may be. But my friend, let me tell you, this side of heaven, things are not perfect. Amen? We are in the perfecting process, all of us believers, but we're not going to get there this side of heaven. So again, my friend, this is anger which is held in. It is again getting angry about something and saying, you know what, I'm going to hold on to that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to stew on it. It is refusing to let things go and get anger dealt with. 
Get this, my friend, if you will, bitterness, something very, get this, something very important is taught to us about bitterness in Hebrews 12, verse 15. Listen, if you will. If you want a practical way to make sure that you are not going throughout life bitter, this is a very practical way of something for you to examine. It says, verse 15, it says, get this, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled or many are corrupted. My friend, what this is saying, get this, this is an illustration of a garden about, get this, that bitterness is a, an evil, a corrupted, bitter seed, a bitter wheat, I'm excuse me, a bitter weed that could fall into a garden and spring up. And what does weeds do? The poisonous seed scatters, doesn't it? Believer, this is telling you, look diligently. We must use discernment, amen? We must examine ourselves constantly. My friend, if you do not want to be bitter, if you want to treat people the way you should treat people, it is your job to look diligently. Amen? We sometimes will go throughout days and weeks and months and years and fail to look deep within and say, look, I'm bitter. I'm holding on to anger against someone or everyone and I'm bitter and I haven't realized it. Amen? Would you do that today? Look diligently. As it says, look, and, and this is very wise, even when you see it start to spring up, root it out. Amen? Get rid of it. Put it off. Get it dealt with. Forgive. Let go. Amen? And it says that um, it will trouble you Bitterness will trouble you, amen? And it says, thereby many be defiled or corrupted. Let me tell you, my friend, if you think it's okay, I'm justified in holding on to this anger, it's okay. Let me tell you, God says it ain't. But let me also remind you, it's going to corrupt you. And have you seen it at times? Bitterness, just like a weed, will throw out poisonous seeds to other people in your life. Amen. So get this, not only would it be confined to that one relationship or those few relationships where you're mad, but it will spring out into all areas of your life and affect your relationships with everyone else and your outlook on life, but it also will spring out to others. You allow yourself to be bitter and to not let go. And before you know it, everyone in your family or everyone in the church or everyone in your workplace is bitter. My friend, look diligently, amen, and root it out before it does more destruction. I think it's interesting. Think about this for a moment. How many times has the bitterness that we've allowed ourselves to stew on and grow in, how many times has it done more destruction than the original offense did, right? Sometimes those original offenses, sometimes they're legitimate. They need to be worked out or let go. But sometimes they are misunderstandings, right? And how many times have we chose, you know what, I, I'm just going to stew on it. I'm going to be bitter, and you yourself do more destruction than the original thing ever could have. Amen? Diligently look. Weed out before it spreads. The next word was wrath. Put away all wrath. Put away all wrath. Wrath is this. It is anger which is let out. Rage. Wrath is anger that is let out. It is unleashing your anger on someone. My friend, again, believer, you're not going to be justified in unleashing wrath 
or rage on people in your life. God says, look, put it all away. It ought not be so. Put it all away. We get a little bit of more practical wisdom from James 1, verses 19 through 20. Again, if you're serious today, I'm ready to get rage and wrath out of my life. I'm done being controlled by and moved by my anger. I'm ready to get it dealt with. Here's a practical way to make sure you do it. James says this, Wherefore, again, my beloved brethren, my fellow believer, let every man, did you hear that? Let everyone be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of God worketh not, excuse me, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen? Let me tell you, our wrath does not accomplish the righteousness of God. If we think in our wrath and in our rage and in our anger that we're going to for one moment do what God is leading us to do, you're wrong. Our wrath is many times self-centered, biased. Many times we've taken offense, we've made it about us, and we're just against whoever. Many times we do not see all the facts. We can't see both sides because we only want to see ours. So let me tell you, your wrath will not do what God is wanting you to do. Amen? If you want to put it off, God says this, you want to put it off? Do this. Be slow, excuse me, be swift or quick to hear. Listen. There's a conflict especially with the Word of God, amen? Be quick to listen. But also with interactions with people in your life, listen. You want something resolved? There's a conflict? Listen. Someone comes to you because they're hurt? Don't jump to conclusions and lash out back. Listen. Listen. Be uh, swift to hear, slow to speak. Don't speak. Listen. Amen. And then it says, be slow to wrath. Let love lead you to not be easily provoked. Amen. You want to love the person? Intentionally choose to and ask the Lord to help you to be slow to wrath with them. Listen. Get it worked out. I'll tell you this, my friend. Get this. For each of us, We are responsible for not provoking others to anger. You're responsible for that. I am too. But we are also responsible for ourselves not being easily provoked. Did you hear that? If we knew that we're responsible for both of those things, my friend, we would have far less conflict in our life. Amen? I'm responsible for not provoking others. And I'm also responsible for not being easily provoked. Amen? And I'll tell you, my friend, love will lead you to do that. Let us grow in love. Here's, my friend, one more practical way to, again, battle wrath. Okay? Proverbs, more wisdom from the book of Proverbs. Verse 1 says this, A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. Amen? Did you hear that? What God is saying, look, it's not just about what you say and the heart behind what, how, how, the, and about the heart behind what you say, but it is also the way you say it. Amen? Have you ever been in a conflict? Someone's been hurt and they've come to you. And when they have come to you, maybe they're upset first. Here's a lesson for us as believers If you want to resolve something with someone, maybe you've been hurt. Scripture says go to them with gentleness and meekness and try to humbly work it out. Amen? Don't go at them yelling. You're not going to resolve anything. But give this. Say someone is um, letting out their anger and they're wrathful and they're mad. You've been there before. Amen? But say someone comes to you Wisdom and love says this, speak back to them softly and gently. Amen? Return unto their anger, their hurt, 
with a soft answer. It may even be like, what's wrong? How have I hurt you? Please tell me about what's going on, right? But let me tell you, and you've seen it before, the way you answer someone can absolutely affect everything, amen? So again, in all of our relationships, wisely put this into action, practically put this into action. Let the way we speak to each other even turn away their wrath, right? Get this, my friend. What's the next one, if you will? Anger. He says, put away all anger. What's anger? Again, this is a constant state of smoldering, simmering anger, right? You've held on to it earlier. You, you kept it in. And now you're choosing to stew on it even longer. It's simmering. There's anger there. And sometimes you, if you walk in a room and there's anger, you could tell it sometimes, right? Sometimes when you're speaking to people, um, you, can, you can let that be made known. But again, that's anger. But believer, would we put that away? Would we get it dealt with? Amen? Don't go to sleep angry, as Scripture already told us in verses 26 and 27. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. God is telling you, look, if you don't want to get to the point where you're stewing on it and simmering on it and it just getting worse, God says, look, be wise and get it dealt with now. Amen? Do you know what God said in those verses would happen if you don't? It says you are giving the devil a foothold in your life. Did you hear that? So if we say, no, I'm just going to stew on it, I'm justified. I ain't going to be the one to let it go. If you do that, let me tell you what you're saying to the devil. You're inviting him in to come and dig in, right? And no telling what more evil is going to be done after that. God isn't leading you. You're giving a place to the enemy. You're giving him authority. My friend, take back the foothold. Take it back. And again, don't stew on anger, but forgive, let it go, and let love and the Lord lead you, not the enemy and not your flesh. Next one, if you will, it says, put away all clamor. That's probably not a word that we use often, clamor. What's clamor? Clamor, get this, is arguing. Are we arguing in our relationships? Are we fighting? Are we bickering with our relationships? Are we quick to do this in our relationships. This is even, get this, it is asserting your rights. It is asserting your side, your grievances, demanding your way and speaking your mind. How many times have we done that? And we felt, look, I'm righteous, I'm justified in doing it. Well, you know what many times we've done? We've created more harm than we've done anything. Amen? We could proudly demand that we're right all day, but pride is going to make us have a big fall. My friend, would we, would we deny ourselves in that? I don't have to be right. I would rather love the other person and have peace. I don't want fighting anymore, amen? It says next one, if you will, evil speaking. Put away evil speaking. This is hurtful insults, cruel, cutting words. Get this, it's even slander. So again, saying harsh words, is, it, is this reflect our communication with people in our life? Do we have slanderous words? Do we have harsh words? Do we have cutting words? Again, think this, there may be people that do this evil speaking behind someone's back or to their face. And have you ever heard someone justify either one? They've said, well, I'm saying it behind their back. It's not hurting them. But let me tell you, evil speaking is meant to hurt, and it does. Amen? You don't have to say it to their face to hurt someone. Amen? You can hurt their testimony. You can hurt their reputation. You can hurt a lot of things. And many times, it gets back and directly, directly hurts them. So let me tell you, it ought not be so, whether it be to the face or behind their, their back, evil speaking ought not be so with the believer, amen? James actually would say this, 
Do not judge or slander your brother. Don't. This ought not be so. It ought not be something that the believer would even consider. Romans, get this, Romans 12 verse 10, a lot of good things in Romans. Romans 12 and 10, it says this, believer, it says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. What's this saying, my friend? Believer, he's saying, look, we are to genuinely, genuinely love each other. Amen? And you know how that will be shown? You won't slander each other. You won't speak evil of each other. You won't tear down someone, but it actually says this, honoring, honor preferring one another. What this is saying is, Take delight in honoring each other. Amen? Right? Hold them to a high esteem. Think of others better than yourself. Hold them to a high esteem and brag on them before you would ever tear them down. Right? This, my friend, is love. This is brotherly love. We saw earlier this, are we using our words to build up, right? Right? Nowhere in that did it say use your words to build up self, correct? I'll tell you, my friend, the old man will many times, we actually talked about this in Sunday school class, a lot of great things there. But again, we are many times, we're tempted to have a self-focused life. And we think it's okay. But let me tell you, that's the old man using our words to build me up, to make me look better, to make everyone else look a little bit worse, to make it look like I'm always right, let me tell you, that's pride, that's selfishness. But love will lead you not to build up self, but it's you decreasing and building everyone else up. Amen? It's, it's honoring one another and delighting in doing it. Would we grow in love? It also says put away malice. What is this? It's, it's an evil mindset toward a person. Let me tell you, my friend, again, all of these are dangerous. They're poison. But if you, if you keep progressing down the line, before you know it, you'll just have a complete evil mindset toward someone. You're done with them. You don't want to be around them. You can't say anything good to them, about them, anything. Any, anything, something happens, immediately you're, you're quick to, to jump on them. But my friend, because God loves us, he's challenging you and me both, all of us, to examine self, ask yourself, where is my heart towards the people in my life? Where is my heart towards everyone? Where is my heart towards God, my lot in life? Where is it? Am I, am I holding on to things? And I, am I being angry? Am I doing all of these things? But let me tell you, here's the key. Would we root out all of this? Would we root out even any form of evil? Get it out of our lives. Say today, it ought not be so. I'm done with it. And ask the Lord daily to help you put on the new clothes of righteousness. And be like Jesus. Here's, if you will, transitioning into the next area. Again, we all have room to grow in our relationships. But what we practically must do, we must say, I'm done. I'm taking this off. But listen, if you don't put something else on, you're going to naturally keep doing the, what the old man wants to do, right? Right? You've got to say, I'm done living like the old man, but it's not just stopping sinning, it is starting doing righteousness and holiness, amen? It is not saying I'm done being hate hateful, but I'm ready to start loving, amen? So practically put those off, but verse 32, start putting these on, amen? If you will, God says this, and be ye kind one to another. Be ye kind. What is this? It is gentle. Gentle. Is this the way you are in each of your relationships today? Are you gentle with them? 
Are you loving with them? Get this, do you have a big heart towards them? Are you caring and are you helpful? That's kindness. It is not only love in your thoughts towards them, but it is love in your actions and your speech towards them. Amen? Kindness. Again, are we that way with the people in our life? And next it says, do that to each other. Be kind to each other. And then it says, tenderhearted. What does that mean, tenderhearted? It means you have a tender spot towards people. Amen? Your heart is not hardened by anger, not hardened by selfishness or past offense, but your heart is tender. It's soft. You've got a warm heart with people. Get this, being tender-hearted is that you are easily moved to compassion, right? Anger, hatred, all that leads you is making you quick to anger, right? Making quick to lash out. But my friend, the Lord is teaching you and me to love and to be easily moved to compassion, right? Again, this is how we need to be in our lives. Again, if someone has taken offense to you and they're coming to you maybe they didn't even do it in the Lord's way and they're not coming to you gently and humbly but maybe they're coming to you in anger would you have a tender heart towards them and have loving pity it's not I am feeling sorry for you I'm better than you but it is knowing we are all sinners and we all get hurt amen and it is having a tender spot and you being easily moved to compassion and saying, what can I do? I'm, I'm here to listen. What's wrong? It also says, get this, this is crucial, forgiving one another. Amen? It says, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Amen? The old man, the old man likes to take offense likes to make it about self, likes to hold on to things, to not let go and to feel justified while doing it. But the godly man, the new man, the man who is like Christ will do this. He will be ready to forgive. Amen? I'm ready to forgive and forgive. Let go. Release. Don't hold them accountable. Forgive. Amen? My friend, this is absolutely crucial. If we want healthy relationships, we must forgive and we must do it constantly. Amen? How many times are we offended or hurt in a day? If we want healthy relationships with each other, we must forgive. Seven times 70, right? Right? Seven times 70, constantly, infinite number, forgive. May we not do this, my friend. May we stop being unwilling to forgive, refusing to forgive. I'm telling you, it's destroying our own hearts towards people, and it's destroying our relationships. My friend, would we be forgiving? It says, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Let me tell you, my friend, Scripture teaches on this. God has forgiven you of everything, believer. Amen? Everything. Did you hear that? Every sin that we've ever committed, God has forgiven you of all of it. Amen? He's forgiven it. My friend, would we do that to each other? Would we um, realize God has forgiven me of everything, something I could not pay back. He's forgiven me of all of it. I'm let go. It's gone. Would we do that with one another? Would we forgive? And would we let go? And would we love each other? Amen? Scripture actually says this. Romans, this is key. Romans 12, 19-21, it says this. Dearly beloved... Again, we think sometimes I'm justified in not letting go. I'm not wanting to forgive. I'm not willing to forgive. And we think sometimes it's going to fix them, right? 
They will stop being selfish. They will stop being sinful if I just treat them bad. But let me tell you, it's only fueling hatred. You're going around in circles. It's not getting better, but you must be the first one to act in love. Amen? Someone has to. Romans is key. It says this, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. Don't try to get back at them. Even refusing to forgive them, you're not getting back at them. Get this, but rather give place under wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The Lord will do it perfectly. Let Him be judge. Amen? We won't do it perfect, but He will. It says, therefore, you first realize, and I'm not here to be judged. God is. It says, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Get this, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. I have a feeling many times in our life, we're going around in circles. In our relationships, we get hurt. And we think I'm going to hold on to it. I'm not going to forgive. I'm going to treat them bad right back and teach them a lesson. But let me tell you, God said that ain't going to work. You're going around in circles. All that you're doing is you're fueling evil and you're fueling hatred. God says this, you, re you really want to break through? You really want to overcome? You really want to end this cycle? You really want to heal this relationship? Do this. Don't be overcome of evil. Don't fall into it and do it right back. But get this, but overcome evil with good. Amen? Love them. Forgive them. Even at times we don't feel like they deserve it or we deserve it, none of us deserve it. None of us deserve the love and the forgiveness and grace that God has graciously given us. But since He has, my friend, today, would we choose, I am ready to love, and I am ready to forgive. I'm ready to be kind. I'm ready to be tenderhearted. Amen. As we stand.